on a day of first impressions, first steps, and drawing first blood. Happy Rangers fans begin the journey home as their team begins the cup journey with a 4-1 win over the Washington Capitals in Game 1 at the Garden. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Gianone, Henrik Lundqvist, and Steve Valaket. If there's a word I would use to describe what we saw over those 60 minutes, Hank, it would be tidy. I think at both yeah. ends of the ice, they just did what was needed to be done to win a game one. I was thinking about they took care of business. That, that's what it felt like. Kind of slow first, turn up the speed in the second period, three quick goals. And after that, they played a very smart patient game. They didn't give Washington many opportunities. They didn't force any plays. Again, they just took care of business tonight. Uh, it's hard going third sometimes because you're saying tidy, take care of business. I'm saying very mature game. Mm. A very mature like game. Description. And, and the reason why I say it is because in the second period, the Rangers are up three to one. It's, it's moving along well. And to me, it looked like they wanted to open up just a little bit and try and play off the rush. And they didn't. They didn't go for it. It's hard because it was a slow game. It wasn't a playoff style hockey game. It was a game that didn't really have any luster to it. And they didn't get frustrated by that. And that's something that's really important to me with this team because if there's one flaw on the Rangers team during the regular season, it was off the rush defense, but they didn't engage in it. They didn't go for it when it wasn't there. So they didn't start a track meet in second. They got it out of the period and then they got in and back to business in the third. I, that's why I like the game. That's a well-played game. It was a smartly played game. Yeah, and it was a feel-it-out first period for sure in which neither team scored. Both teams had one five-on-five -five shot apiece. But then in the second period, Steve, the Rangers maybe needed an early jolt, yeah. and they got it from a first-rate performance from their fourth line. Which was what we had hoped, right? And you're going into the postseason, you're talking about the top six sawing each other off and you need that depth scoring. Well, the Rangers got it in spades in this game. Big goal from Rempe. And I think that he was able to get over an early hit that shouldn't have been called and stay within his game plan. The framework of his game plan didn't change. And then he's on the ice for goal number three as well, where he creates that havoc in front of the net. And you're getting the support from everybody uh, bottom six wise, everybody's going to answer back physically, you know that. But being able to add to the score sheet and being able to get a little bit of confidence early on that way, uh, it helped them through the game just to stay within that conscious. And they weren't getting outside of what they should have been playing into. Uh, McElrath may have loved to have a fight with Rampy right there, but he didn't buy him into that. And that was, again, a very mature game from him, too. Great for Matt Rempe. Yeah, and you touched on it during the game. Rempe takes a penalty early in the game. And that could really affect the guy. The first playoff game, and you can feel the pressure. But it, he didn't let it get to him at all. I, I thought this first, fourth line, the incredible game. And, and we also talked about during the game the importance of having confidence in your fourth line. Not only within themselves, but as a team, you, you know you can send out the fourth line because down the stretch, if you want to have a long run here, you're going to have to rely on that fourth line a lot yeah. just to make, make sure everybody stays fresh and you, you can't be playing the top guys too much. So great start for the fourth line and the team. Henrik, uh, it took about six minutes from after the game was over for Jacob Truba to say it's time to turn the page. Do you really turn it that quickly after you win a playoff game? Um, yeah, I think the quicker the better. Uh, uh, I think the important thing when you play in the playoffs is to get away from the game in between games because the preparation and the amount of time you spend thinking about the game, going into the game and obviously playing it, it's important to get away from it and not think about it at all. That's how you stay fresh. And then tomorrow maybe you start thinking about the next game. But you, you don't want to hang on to this one for too long. I think the best thing is kind of do other things tonight, enjoy your time with family, friends, get away from the game, and that way come to the rink tomorrow really fresh, ready for game in two days. Well, when Peter Laviolette stood behind the Rangers bench today, he did so as the active coach with the most playoff games behind the bench, and he was not afraid, Steve, to make some moves early in the second period, putting Panarin up on the top line for Jack Roslevic and going to the well of that fourth line yeah. pretty early on, and it paid off with Matt Rempe's goal. Take us inside the film room powered by CDW. Show us how Matt Rempe was able to score a playoff goal. It was interesting because it was just a shift after the Panarin switch up front at that faceoff that Rempe was able to let loose, but now it's a 200-foot goal because it starts in the Rangers' own 
down zone. And that's where you need Rempe and Goudreau and Visa. You need your fourth line to be able to transport the puck as well, but also to recognize how are we getting into the zone? Are we going to use the speed of the outside lane? Can we stretch the ice and go east to west? There's a little bit of risk in that if you don't have that separation that you created with your speed to the neutral zone. And when Goudreau sends this puck back to VZ, watch the route quickly that Rempe takes. He opens himself on the back door, and it's for better or not, a back door slam dunk. Hmm. It's a wide open net. He doesn't really have to beat the goaltender, but he enjoys all of the success of 200 feet away. All of that work. It's always seven seconds, three touches. They did all the right work to make it easier on the back end. Key for me, too. You watch that clip, especially right before he scores the goal. Three guys really close. They help, help each other out by close support all the time. It's very hard. The, the top line sometimes, they stretch the play a lot. They make a lot of skill plays. On a fourth line, it's more dump and chase the puck, but then you need close support all the time. And I love the fact that Jimmy quickly tried to make that pass. Quick mm -hmm. and easy place, close support, that's what led to the goal.